The previous colors have been done in a stripe pattern. I love working with stripes because, especially when I'm dyeing new colors, it's a really easy way to have a little bit of control of the dye. And just placing them side by side in stripes, it's, again, it's easy and I can really plan out how I think those colors are going to look in the end product. And providing that, you know, there isn't much of the dye traveling, you know, like the colors will pretty much stay in place and behave the way that I think they should. Now, I'm not going to do stripes for these last two. I'm actually going to just haphazardly pour the dye into the pans. I have a fairly good amount of water in here because I want the dye to have a lot of room to move around and I don't really want these colors, I don't want the colors to be really controlled. I uh, want them to move around and do their thing and um, and then just see what how things turn out. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep layering different shades and flipping the yarn in between. So this pan is already getting quite full of liquid and because um, I have quite a high concentration of acid in here, you can see that that dye has already been absorbed. So what I'm going to do is pour off some of this so that I can fit more dye into this pan. And I'm not even going to wait for this to, to uh, totally exhaust because, you know, I don't really, I really do want these colors to all kind of blend together. And I think that's what's happening here. Sometimes it's a bit hard to figure out how to word things properly because I really want to be able to repeat this color, but I did quite a few things differently that I didn't plan on, as I mentioned. So how do I word this so that when I look at it down the road, it makes sense? So that's what I'm trying to figure out right now, how to write out in enough detail so that, you know, I can repeat this color. So. It takes, it takes a bit of time to do that, 
and I'm, I know I'm going to say it again and I say this over and over again about the importance of keeping detailed notes because you know sometimes the dye process can be quite um, I don't want to say complicated but you know it can be complex uh, to do a certain color if you layer a lot of different colors and do a lot of different steps even the way that the yarn is arranged in the pan you know things like that all have to be factored in so that you can kind of get the same result over and over again so with the last color I just did I I did quite a few things differently that I didn't plan on so I want to make sure that I don't forget any of those steps I also used dye that I didn't originally plan to use in my little um, formula that I had going there so I swapped out some different colors and so I want to make sure that I record all of that so it's going to take me a few minutes to do that but it's well worth taking the time to do that especially if you're really happy with the color and I really like how it turned out I also the dye that I used I didn't use the dye at full strength I really watered it down because I wanted to produce a color that was more soft so I have to also write down the amount of dye the ratio of dye to water that I used so that um, because that's going to play an important factor if I use these dyes at full strength I'm going to get a totally different color and that's not what I want so I have to really remember uh, the ratio of dye that I used and I'm having a little bit of difficulty remembering exactly what I did so again you can see the importance of writing things down as you're doing it it's only been a few minutes and I'm already forgetting some of the steps some of the things that I that I did and it can be a pain because when I'm in the flow and creating I don't like to stop and write things down I like just to you know instinctively just keep working and um, I don't want to interrupt the workflow but I probably should have stopped a few times and written down what I did because now it's I'm having some difficulty remembering exactly what I did I'm doing the same technique that I did with the last color and before I started I actually wrote out in detail what I did with the last color because I'm going to repeat that the same technique with this one so I saved myself a little bit of aggravation and made sure that I wrote everything out beforehand in detail for this color. So we'll see if it uh, turns out according to plan.
Now I'm kind of not sure what to do at this stage because I'm kind of liking what is happening here. I do have another color written down that I was going to apply, but I don't know if I should do it or not. In fact, I don't think I'm going to use what I had in mind. You know what, I changed my mind. I think I'm gonna go for it. All right, so that's it. All of the colors that I just dyed, I have them in the oven and they're just going to cook away for a few hours to let the dye totally exhaust and set into the fibers. So I'm quite pleased with what I accomplished. The colors I came up with are quite different for me and it felt good to experiment and try something new. So I'm not really going to know if I, I'm not going to really know what I have until those skeins have been washed and dried. And then, you know, I'm really going to see the true color and then I can decide whether I whether the colors worked out or not, but I do have a pretty good feeling about most of them. And perhaps in the comments, you can tell me what colors you like. So I'm gonna head off now and take a shower, have some dinner and relax. And we'll see you next time with the result of the colors we did.